thank you everyone for joining us. I'd like to introduce you to Evan Smith and Preston Johnson, our co-chairman and our new manager, Kevin. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with our local newspaper, uh, the Fully Observer, Mark Dunford. After that, I'll raise it to anyone, just raise your hands and we'll get to all the questions we can. Oh, thank you. Hi, Kevin. Welcome to Crawley Town. Thank you. Um, what is it that first attracted you to Crawley Town before you even spoke to these guys going for the job at um, yeah, basically, Crawley's had a really good history in the past. Um, They've um, been a progressive club, trying to get up the leagues, um, and they've done it well. They're a very community-based um, club, um, very family-orientated, which is important. Um, so they, those aspects uh, were matched my thoughts of what a progressive club looks like, and uh, obviously speaking to these two guys next to me that was sort of like tick the last box really. Yeah and what was it that they said that really got you into the job? Yeah, I think um, Preston and Evan are real genuine people, extremely bright and articulate in their different fields and they want to bring a new um, innovative way of thinking into the football industry and um, obviously you know with um, with the vision and the, the, the belief that they wanted to put here into Crawley you know it was just something that it was it was um, um, a lined approach, if you like. Yeah. Exciting. And I saw your interview with the club last night, and you said a couple of times you said we want to do things in a different way. Can you elaborate on that and what you mean? Yeah, by that? I think um, you know, for us, talking's cheap. You know, it's we can sit here and talk and say we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and it's your actions and how you behave on a, every single day and what you implement. And uh, you know, you've seen a lot of things in the past. Are oh, we going to do this? We're going to do that. But we're not going to sit here and. and you know, spout out all these fantastic things. We're going to be hopefully doing it on the grass and doing it within the community. And yeah, that's the important thing for us. I would uh, would say. And you've been here for about 24 hours now. You've visited the club. You've spoken to a lot of people. What are your first impressions? Of yeah, fantastic. Yeah, the staff here. Some of the staff have been here 10, 15, 20 years. Amazing. Where their commitment to the football club and um, what they give. Um, and it's, it's good to see. Really, you know, lovely people. Welcome, Dan and myself to the club brilliantly yesterday and um, you know um, they all want, to, want Crawley to do well, they want us to do well and want the players to do well and that's good to have a real great staff behind us because without really good staff um, you know you're never going to be successful so really important, that was great. Yeah and you mentioned Dan briefly there, you're going to be stuck in a hotel room for four days with him now, what are the main sort of points you're going to be looking at over the next four days? Yeah we, we've got um, a clear process of, of how we want to work and our plan um, you know, it's um, it's important because we know the helter skelter of um, League Two. It's um, thick and fast. There's lots of games. Um, there's lots of challenges in terms of travel. Um, but if your planning and preparation is to the highest level, um, then that helps you when it comes to you know the emotional roller coaster of the league. Um, so you know we'll be ready. We're, we're putting things in place to give ourselves the best chance and have the support of. The owners and the board um, will be able to act on certain plans that we have in place, and uh, hopefully we'll have those and meet those time timelines that we've set ourselves. But staying in a hotel for four or five days to plan plan your season or plan your your first three months of football management is is not even a job, is it? It's exciting, and it's we'll do it for nothing. It's fine. Absolutely, and um, you said about the roller coaster of League Two. You're coming from an environment of academy football. Yeah. How is it going to be for you adapting? To managing a League Two side? Yeah, it's a great question. I think, um, really, um, I think it's ever since I was 17, 18, I've been in a first team environment uh, as a player. Um, that experience of 15, 17 years of professional football, right from National League all the way through to Premier League, um, working with younger players, older players, different characters, winning promotion. Um, nearing relegation, winning, it being in the playoffs, all those different challenges has set me a good sort of like standard in the, in the game. I understand the industry very well. Um, obviously, going into coaching and management is very different, and I've decided to go down a route of learning my craft extremely well. Um, and I've obviously done that with my with uh, the work that I've done in in the different roles, um, and then obviously the preparation now of all those years of of grass time as a coach and added to the football experience as a player, hopefully now it's a, a time to be ready for first team management. Lovely, thanks Kevin. Preston, quick one for you. Um, sure. how, uh, it's been quite a roller coaster ride since you've taken over the club, um, how excited are you now that you've got your man in place and you're 
and you can move forward. This is the fun part now, right? Like, yeah. No, we're, we're extremely excited, and uh, you know, I think that's the cliche thing to say. But you know, part of our vision before we even decided, you know, to, to, to get a club and, and acquire it and, and, and do this in the first place, it was you know, we want to be data and analytically driven, and we want to do things in a way that. Um, is inclusive to fans both locally and internationally remote. We also want to do things in a way that um, provides you know, openness and transparency to them and provides access in an unprecedented manner that can kind of you know, change the mold a little bit on how we can um, engage with our, our supporters and our fans. So uh, Kevin's on board with a lot of those things, all of them pretty much. Um, we have a few curveballs we might throw at him at some point <laughs> this year, and he's ready for those as well. But he, bar- he, you know, he checked every box as far as um, the football side, and um, as far as like his, um, you know, just speaking to someone else about this previously, and uh, so not to make Kevin blush, but I, I really appreciate how much he values relationships, not even just with the players and the staff, um, but the fans and supporters, but even the family members of players, and like all of that is um, part of this inclusivity brand and, and culture that we're trying to to set here at Crowley Town, and it also will eventually show itself on the pitch. And, and so that was something that was immediately present, um, part of Kevin's persona. And so uh, extremely excited. And you know, I think him and Dan are, are the part of this future and gives us the best chance to get promoted. Yeah, and a really great reaction to um, the season ticket prices yesterday. What was the thinking behind reducing it? Price? Sure. I mean, it's just part of our strategy long term is going to be listening to the fans and then trying to implement in the most feasible way you know, their concerns or their suggestions, right? And if they say, hey, ticketing on average is too expensive it's hard for us to go to games more frequently um, like we on average lowered them by about a third which then offers more opportunity for supporters to attend the games it makes it better for the actual community to have more fans in the stands it's better for the players and the staff to have more fans cheering and so the idea ultimately is all these steps all these variables equal how to look at this the best chance to win and so that, I think that's part of it and we're trying to you know do something and engage with the community that they actually see us making a difference. Thank you. Yep. Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, Kevin, I bet it's been a whirlwind 24 hours for yourself, but have you actually managed to speak to the players uh, just yet and have any conversations with them? Yeah, um, quite frankly, Kyle, no. Um, but as, as you said, the plan, the players are the most important and you know, real time will be set aside in the next week or so. The players are on holiday, most of them. Some of them are on honeymoon. Um, and the downtime for a professional footballer, I know, is really precious. But, you know, believe you me, the care and attention that um, that we place on, on the players and uh, how much time we give them, you know, will be second to none. They would never experience how much care that we will give them as a, as a group of staff. Um, but we'll be ready when it comes to the first day of pre-season. We'd have spoken to all the players before then. We'll know every all their family names, everything. But yeah, it's 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 going to be coming in the next couple of couple of weeks. Preston has mentioned the importance of relationships and how highly you rate having those relationships mm-hmm. with the players. Obviously, with the circumstances around the club over the last couple of months, how important will that relationship be between yourself and each individual player? Yeah, m- massively. Um, I think we have to um, have an uh, analysis of. You know what the experiences they they had, and you know this is not something that we we want to brush under the carpet type thing. You know we must um, face some challenges and have some honest conversations, and and um, give give players time to to um, voice their their views, um, and then we were able to understand them more as people and what their experiences were, and we will hopefully um, listen. Um, give them some advice and ways that we can improve things and um, yeah we will move on from that but we, until you've gone through that process of you know listening communicating each other facing things up being open and honest you can't move forward um, but we will have that process as a, as a group of, of staff and a group of players to make sure that we're able to move forward quickly and positively and I'm sure all of that work will be happening behind the scenes and a lot of the focus will be on the stuff on the pitch as well. Have you already thought about things you may want to change when it comes to the football here? Yeah, I think, as, as I said, um, you know, um, the Crawley has been a very progressive club over the last you know, three or four, five, six years. But even before that, um, there's been some excellent managers here in the past that have done extremely well. Um, and the last season's performances was also... Um, very good, you know, mid-table, 
it's um, it's a positive return if you like. So we will be doing some things differently. Um, but as I said, we're not here to be talking early doors about this and that. Let's just do it on the pitch, and then people will see and, uh, and appreciate what we do. Um, yeah, but bear in mind the fans will know that what the identity of a Crawley team looks like. Um, it will be exciting, um, we'll be adaptable, we'll be aggressive, we'll be attacking. Um, those three things um, are really important to us and they'll be shown on the pitch. And just one more from me, mm. uh, another person of colour in a managerial mm. role, do you see that as a, a huge positive step for football? Yeah, without a doubt, I think, um, you know, honestly, um, you have to do a lot of work, a lot of qualifications, like everyone does. Um, but yeah, there is there is there is a minority of us that are of colour that um, are in managerial roles um, in English football and in world world football, uh, quite honestly. Um, but that's the way it is these days, and um, you know we have to keep pushing hard to um, achieve roles um, and then be successful within those roles. Um, and hopefully, I'm another manager that can um, you know give inspire the next generation of young coaches as I you know people told me when I got the England role um, that was inspired a lot of coaches and hopefully I can do that more um, in the professional game now in the, in the first team sphere. Brilliant thank you. Pleasure. Well hi, Kevin just to follow up on that is that something is is, um, is your race your identity something that's been something that has been at the forefront of your career has it been and if uh, have you faced hurdles? Uh, more challenging, more yeah. You've been able to... No, I think um, sometimes where you live and the, the diverse nature of your location can put you in different places. So I'll give you some examples. I was brought up in East London, 16 tower block, council estate. It's, it's, it's quite diverse there, yeah? Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's tough. Um, and then when I got to 11, my, my dad had a really good job, worked really hard, managed to get us out of that area moved us into Berkshire. So Berkshire is quite rural, lots of grass, but there's not much diversity in Berkshire. So I, my, my team at school, I was probably the only black, black player in the, in the, in the team. Um, same with my normal grassroots team on a Sunday. Um, so it's already visible from, for me to live just because of my pro proximity. So obviously in, in my career, in my football career, as a player, it doesn't in the football industry when you get an opportunity. It's not really seen as a thing, um, but obviously I'm aware um, that it is. I always always had to do more, if you like. That's just nature, how it goes. We always have to do more. That's something that's ingrained in me as as a young kid. I always have to um, behave in a certain way, um, and it links now to my coaching. So I know. I always have to do more as a person, whether I'm black or white, it doesn't matter. I always have to do more. That's just been instilled in me as a, as a young kid. So when it comes to qualifications, I know if I want to be a football manager, I have to get every qualification under the sun, okay? And then I have to get something else, like a, a degree, okay? So when I'm sat in front of two owners, okay, who want to appoint a new manager, and they're talking to me about analytics, or they're talking to me about physical performance, or they're talking to me about player recruitment, I'm able to answer every single question in a way that, that gives them a real clear answer um, and I'm able to convince them that I know what I'm talking about. If I haven't ticked every box, then I'm not going to be credible. Um, so you have to do more. That's, that's the motto, I'd say. And I'm not very aware I'm a white guy yeah. these questions. And, and, um, but when, when I've spoken to other people of colour within the game, they say that's one of the... That's other, the the invisible barriers sometimes is that it's about networks, it's about con connections, who you know, and, and therefore the people who are appointed the jobs, yeah. they know who they trust. Mm -hmm. Has it helped at all that these are new owners, these are people from outside the English game have come in? Do you think that's you've been able to um, talk with them on, on a different level? Yeah, I think because their recruitment strategy is different. Football management in this country, yeah, the recruitment management is it is what it is, if you say. Um, there's, some, there's some clubs out there that do it extremely well, no doubt about that. Very thorough in their process, a real um, broad range of, of candidates, um, selecting the criteria, 
that they're looking for in certain managers and coaches. Um, but in, in other um, um, clubs, it might be very much relationships or people they know or very much the managers that have always they've been doing well at other clubs and or not to wait on, but they get another chance. And yeah, that's, that's how it goes. But as you know, with the appointments that they made here and the other clubs, most recently with new, exciting, innovative coaches that are looking to do new things, it's not always going to work, but at least giving being in the in the seat at the table, if you like, to have an opportunity. Final question from me, mm. just going to the football. Mm. Um, you, you talked a little bit about the kind of the, the approach to the game. Would you say you're a kind of a pragmatic manager or a philosophy manager? Mm. Would you, would you, do you have an idea that you want to stick to, or would, would it depend on the players getting to know them and the events that come? Yeah, no, I think. Um, one of the things that I've been able to learn over the course of my career as a, as a coach and, a, and as a player is um, to play in different different ways, um, you know, to be successful. I played um, for managers in different leagues that, that play low-risk football, that pick up second balls, that work in the channels, that really good on set plays and all, always successful. I played for managers that have been purists, that play a beautiful brand, they want everything from the back, um, they want uh, technical quality throughout the team, um, but have also been successful. So their experience help you. Um, for myself, obviously the individual that we have at our disposal is really important. Um, so the players that we have currently, we have to work um, a way in a system to work within within them. But as I said before, the three things for me that, that won't change and um, will be, we will be attacking, we will be adaptable, okay, and we'll be aggressive with and without the ball. So those three things are going to be the benchmark of our work and like I said as you'll see we know League 2 um, inside out we know what's required we need to work hard we need to win set plays um, we need to defend well um, we need to play on different surfaces at different moments how can you handle playing up north in the rain in the snow etc on a terrible pitch yeah you need to be there you need to perform um, but it, we will play a brand that people enjoy coming to watch us play and they know, but they know that we're gonna we're gonna win a lot of battles as well, because that's without that you're finished. Thank you. Yeah, um, just a quick question for Evan, if that's okay, Evan. Um, what do the finances of the club look like now, and what sort of investment can Kevin expect in terms of uh, new players? Um, I mean, we have a budget that we set for this year. Um, but we hope to increase it over the next six months. Um, we just met with Kevin for about an hour to discuss what we're going to invest in currently between uh, players and equipment upgrade and staff. Um, that'll be an ongoing process and um, we're just really excited to have his expertise to help us shape where and what we spend it on. And what sort of budget is that in terms of numbers? What figure do you have that? Uh, not today, thanks. I don't want to tell you, are we? That is. <laughs> Good. Yeah, exactly. He has to be reassured that he's got X, so he's going to keep and afford to bring in, you know, whatever he needs, you know. Yeah, no, I think I think for for us, our um, our budget will be competitive. It will give us a chance to, um, you know, be competitive in the league and do well. Um, but as I says, you know, talking's cheap. With the num numbers, um, we'll see what players we can bring in. Um, when they're on the pitch, you'll be able to see the level of quality you'll be able to bring in, and um, yeah, let's let's make sure that um, we get those things right. And um, the numbers thing is is something for championship manager maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Preston's spoken about um, promotion in the next two seasons. Is that something that you feel you can deliver, Kevin? Yeah, otherwise we wouldn't be sat here, without a doubt. Um, it's um, that's our ambition. Um, we want to be successful, we want to compete, we want to do well. Um, but the most important thing is for us is our performances on a weekly basis. If we get our performances right, um, over time you're going to be successful. Um, with our processes in place, we get those right, we'll be successful. Um, and that will mean being in the, in the top reaches of the division. But listen, this league, you know the level of the, of the, the teams that we're competing with, um, huge fan base. Um, huge budgets, um, but yeah, you know we're going to do our best to to compete and um, you know spring some surprises next season, and um, hopefully it's going to be a good ride. Thank you. Pleasure. Any more? Thank you.
Good. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Pleasure. Thanks, guys. Take care.